Danny, you better say hello this time. You better do it correct. Hello. Okay. Um, so I've been warned to make a safe state because this is potentially dangerous. Oh no, this Gaiden is not. Well, I mean, you could lose on this Gaiden, but I, I meant that as a general rule of thumb. Um, because not every really? Gaiden is winnable. <laughs> Yes, I, I love this. This is great. I, I think this is awesome. So, um, the place where Matthew currently is, that's Rebecca's vanilla starting point. If Rebecca was alive, she would be there. Which would mean she can run around on the on the rivers. Well, unfortunately, that, that's, that must suck for her. Alright. So, oh, uh, what what's are you up doing this right turn, now? What's this turn count? What the <laughs> What do you mean? What's wrong? This is vanilla. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wait, what do you do? Wait, what? <laughs> you just end turn? Yeah, I wanted to just make a beeline for the... Okay, I mean, you can do that if you want. Um, Did you not... Are you not worried about your game over condition? Oh, I didn't know this was an archer bias hack. Puzan moment, yeah. I, this is where Puzan is from. But, uh, are you not worried? Like, I think you're gonna game over here. What do you, what do you mean? Oh, oh. Uh, Merlin, this is a game over condition. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, he'll, he'll dodge. <laughs> um, so, the, I, I guess I'll tell you about, like, this is what I meant when I said that uh, not every change is meant to be a difficulty change. While keeping Merlinus alive is definitely like a little bit of an arduous task because you now like you can't rescue him, right? Um, the bigger thing is that this is now a 25 turn defend map and the yeah. green units have random movement AI and they will move every turn. <laughs> okay. Um... In random patterns. <sighs> Dang it. They yeah, can't rescue those. Uh, you you are gonna want to rescue that archer at the very least. Yeah. Okay. Cause like, you can box in his one range, but like probably not the two range. What I ended up doing, cause I have beaten this map, I tested it to make Shucks. sure it was doable. Is just boxing in Merlinus and then uh. Because, like, the green units can walk through blue units. Mm -hmm. And so, as it stands, that Myrmidon is absolutely going to attack from the south. <sighs> the, the fighters are going to be a problem. I want the money village, though. <laughs> you want the money village so bad. I mean, only one person needs to go for the money village, because there's no more red brigands. Yeah. Like, they won't destroy the village. So, like, all I did is I boxed in Merlinus so no one could attack him. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, just hit end turn 25 times. And watched everyone randomly scramble around. I wonder what these <laughs> bandits, though. <laughs> so, so, what I did is I made every enemy that starts on the map green, and all of the ambush spawns remained red. <laughs> Looks like you breathed your last. <laughs> he doesn't even double his own soldier. He's a bad boss. I've, oh my god. I, I, I've like never fought Puzan. <laughs> That's where his iconic phrase comes from though. Um, and yeah, the enemies do just- or the green units- The green units and the red units all have random movement, so they're not moving towards anything in particular. They're just, other than the ones who are doing combat, right? Because random movement gets interrupted if they see combat they can do. But otherwise, yeah. everyone's just literally moving randomly. Ant versus, which you inspired? Ant, Ant versus, versus a snack. <laughs> who, do you, who would you vote for? I would vote for the snag. Snag. Snag has, like, more HP. Like, <laughs> died. Ugh. <laughs> The snag, uh, the snag can water walk. Well, Jam. Which Kent cannot. And the snag has wary fighter. Yeah, it does. 
Kent doesn't have any skills. Uh, some of those brigands, I think, have hand axes. Yeah, I gotta... Be cautious here. But I think you're fine as it stands. Again, like, it is random movement, so... They're not even necessarily gonna go for Merlin if they can't attack him. Uh, but that's part of the fun. It means everyone moves on every turn. Th this is, like... I've seen people want to do this concept, but I've like never seen it like done like as creative as this thus far, unless I'm being blatantly like ignorant. I mean, um oh the idea of like protecting red units. Yeah, I mean I guess there's um the, the do, do right? yeah the do paralog, but I but hardly count that as like a great example so it's, of that. It's it's an interesting one, right? Mm -hmm. Because like you do get punished for the green units killing the red units. Yeah. Um, but the way you solve that is you kill the red unit. So it's like, it's halfway kind of that. Um, I think that this could work as like a real chapter, but I don't know how much. Like, I, this was not intended to be a real chapter, right? Yeah. Um, I think this could potentially work as a real chapter, uh, if you give like, it would have to be under a GBA system where you can rescue drop, though, mm -hmm. right? Like, it, it couldn't work in something like Three Houses where your only option is to warp green units away or, like, use movement tools or stuff. Shove, I think just that shove that the green work. units off. <laughs> yeah, or shove red units. Can yeah. you shove on red units in Three Houses? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think, no, you can't. Oh, that's lame. I like that, uh, one of the things I like in Tellius, I guess that it that it's not quite green, the same thing, but Tellius has the priest map. Yeah. Where you try to keep the priests alive, and you shove them around. Um, but you're protecting them from yourself, basically. So yeah, I, uh... I guess that would be the closest one. Um... Otherwise... I think this concept... The thing is that, like, yes, this concept could... Oh, you're gonna want to block that corner, yeah. This concept could work in, like, a real ROM hack. But then it just would end up being, like, an intern simulator, right? Like, this is kind of just an intern simulator. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's more of a gimmick than an actual cool map concept. Which is why I'm putting it here, because, like, I don't think... Unless there's, like, multiple red units you need to protect, but even then, like... Yeah, I don't know. This is significant. This is, like, the first chapter of so far. It's been, like, a like, a distressor. Like, it's, like, not as bad as the vanilla counterpart. Yeah. Uh, well, like I said, not every change that I made was specifically to make things harder. Yeah. Uh, it was also to make them, like, worse in other ways. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this is now 25 turns. Yeah. I think that, that is a, a worse version of this map, even without... Like, I, that not only is it 25 turns, but the random green unit means that those turns are gonna drag mm -hmm. on because everyone moves at complete random. I do think it's weird that, like, there's ambush spawns on, like, specifically this and, like, two other maps in this game. <laughs> God, they're, they're so... they're so awful. <laughs> it's like this map, the Fog of Warland map, and... I don't remember. Oh, right. There's ambush spawns in Lin mode. I don't remember where where it, the last. It might it might be like, you know, 19xx or something. I've never actually played 19xx. Have it's you? Not, it's not great. I played it like on normal mode. It's just kind of just fog of war and um, ballistas everywhere. Um, there. Uh, there is, I, someone told me, like, there's, like, a, it's really good if you want to train up a unit, because, like, there's a, uh, like, a thief that has, like, that's level 20 or something. Yeah, although the other thing is that thieves have that weird trait where, like, they're considered to be, um, they're considered to be, like, a lower tier class, so you get less experience from killing them. Um, so you, it's, like, weird, because they're, like, level 20. Um. But, yeah. I don't know. Boy. 
I also, I want to address something. Yes. Because a couple of episodes ago, I talked about a dragon sheath that Matthew yes. can steal. I realize now that the person who sent me the list of all of the Matthew stealable items, um, almost certainly she made a typo, because it's almost certainly supposed to be dragon shield, because oh, yeah. D and F are right next to each other. I've been like, there's, like um, the hidden. Because I just searched, because I was like, you know, this is kind of just going to be a podcast episode. There's nothing else really going on, other than hitting end turn. Um, so I was like, I'll search and see what that dragon chief is. We can talk about that, because that's like a double dash ass item. And I looked it up, and there's no such item named dragon chief. And it was like, did you mean dragon shield? And I was like, no, I didn't mean dragon shield. I meant dragon chief. Uh, and no, I meant dragon shield. Uh, or rather, she meant Dragon Shield, which made a typo, my friend. Yes. Because I was asking about the Matthew of it all. I almost want to, um, just rescue this one. Can he reach Merlinus? He would have to walk on water. Like, he would have to go on the, the North River, right? Yeah, but it's like, they're gonna be obnoxious about it. I mean, if you want to, you can, yeah. I don't see, I don't see a downside. But they are random movements, so like they might also just run away from Merlinus. <laughs> so, uh, I guess the I, I the question of the day. Yes. Uh, do you like um? Fuck, I forget what I was gonna say now. Oh yeah, do you like um the like? Ocean Seal for pirates, um, or do you prefer them using like Hero Crest like they do in Epi Six? <laughs> oh my God, buddy! Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 pretty like I would just say like the 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 hero the Hero Crest would just been would have been fine. Like it it still would not help Dart. I think it's like it, you would feel less crappy about. Mm -hmm. about it, I guess, because, like, I think at that point, by the time, like, you you would decide to promote Dart, like, I think that's, like, past the point where, like, promoting Raven is, like, as crucial. Um, but... Fair. You get a second Hero Crest. Yeah. And you also when have, you like... You get the second Hero Crest, actually. You get it... You get it, um... New Resolve, I think. Yeah, New Resolve. It's on the okay, boss. Okay, see... You get it before you would get the Ocean Seal, too, Famously, then. vote, like, decide as one of the worst maps in the Fire Emblem series. I actually fucking hate that map, yeah. <laughs> I actually fucking hate that map. Well, I was watching that, but it was like, well, dang, I, I did not know that that is your pick for, like, of in F7, you know, um, a game so that, that was, has... I think that was Zenith's pick. I think it was. Cause I, so yeah. for those who are not aware, I was on Mithra Zenith's channel recently, um, where we did a video about the worst maps in every game. Mm -hmm. um, and each of us picked like one really bad map. Uh, but he banned Battle Before Dawn because he's done an entire video on yeah. it. Uh, which like, it would basically just end up being like 20 minutes saying the exact same thing that's already on the channel. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I picked. I think I picked chapter eleven. I think that's base. I think that's such 11. a base pick. The thing is that it's like it's not even like the reasons that I don't like chapter eleven. Like I do think it's a bad map on your first playthrough, but I think one of the other things is that it is a map that gets worse with each time you play it because there's not really any iteration to be had. Uh, it's similar to a lot of the really bad maps in Radiant Dawn Part 2, in that, like, you have the same units, so you're just doing the same thing, and it's it highlights the issues every time you play it, right? Like, oh, Hector has just, like, a little bit too little bulk. Uh, Matthew is a little bit too useless. Um, the Thief has the... So, potentially, that Thief can roll up on speed and you can't steal the Red Gem from him, at which point Hector has no fucking hit on him. Um, I mean, and speaking of Hector's hit, like, he has 75 on a lot of enemies, like the archers and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, it just becomes like, like, Dart was having accuracy problems, and Dart has a higher skill stat than Hector. 
Uh, and Hector can fix that a little bit with the Wolf Bale, but then you're, like, using the Wolf Bale. Um, it's just such a... It's well, a frustratingly designed map, it, it and feels, only it, having two units is so bad. It feels it, it feels it feels really with dread every time. Like I want, I was like, oh, I, I need to do like an FV7 thing for like a video, or like maybe I want to play mm -hmm. FV7. Like oh, I gotta play this map, and and also chapter twelve. But chapter I've kind of grow, grown on chapter twelve. It's just like if I beat this, I look like a like a Chad or whatever. Um, I think chapter twelve might be the second best map in FV7. Yeah. Um, um, specifically Hector 12. Yeah. Like, I, I don't actually know about Ellywood 12. I, It's been so long since I played Ellywood mode. Uh, and also, last time I played Ellywood mode was on Zero Growths, too. So, like, it's not even, like, super reflective. Although, I guess 12 is the same on Zero Growths, basically, as it would be in Vanilla. Like, oh, no, maybe Rebecca has one less point of strength or Ooh. something. I like, you know, I like Ellywood mode, actually. I, I think it's, like... It's close. Like I know, I know this is like a stupid thing to say because you could just play FE8, but like it's it's it feels closer to like the FE8, like you know, brisk pace. Oh, not to me, because my issues with FE7 aren't really its difficulty. Yeah. Um, like I do think it's harder than people give it credit for, but I also don't think it's like this omega hard game. No. Like I do still think it it falls in the bottom half in terms of difficulty. Um. Like, bottom is an easier, not bottom is yeah. in, like, it ends up being bad because of the difficulty. I think that it being easier or harder wouldn't really actually make a difference in terms of how much I'd like it or dislike yeah. it. I, I just think the maps are designed poorly. Yeah. But me having to think less about them means I have to play the game less. I mean, or you play the game more because rain happens. Cause you, like, you, um, you end up with like the hey, Pegasus hey, Knights hey, in the rain moment. Hey, hey, hey. The um, the uh, Pale Flower Darkness starts with no weather, so you go faster to start. Oh, in normal mode yes. or in Ellywood mode rather? Yes. Although okay, I guess here's you, a riddle. Oh, I guess what you, do you do, think? I guess you do have to wait for Arkin though, so never mind. Well, but hitting end turn is a lot faster than marching everyone through the yeah. snow. Although I guess not for you, cause you don't know how to hit end turn. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's, I'm it, telling you, like, the green is, units are this, this is like Schrodinger's like hit your greens problems. Like I hit enter, <laughs> like I hit enter too early, someone complains. If I don't hit enter, like while thinking about like being cautious, someone complains. But what is there to be cautious about? You boxed in Merlinus. No one can kill him. <laughs> oh, never mind. Just look, look, we have oh, <laughs> stupid freaking. <laughs> Unless that bandit like randomly moves exactly onto the river tile, um, I don't think anyone can kill him. And it would have to be like the north river tile. Wait, guy can walk on water? Wait, guy is Jesus confirmed? Perhaps. Giuseppe is Jesus. Wait, is he Giuseppe now? No, yeah, we're going. This is now Giuseppe. I know people call him Guy and get like really anal about that. No, it's, um, it's Giuseppe. Which I'm like, I'll be honest, I'm not here for pronunciation wars. I don't give a yeah. shit if his official name is Guy. Um, look, it's not like, as bad. I don't, I don't look, care. Guy is not as bad as freaking Diamante. I'm sorry. I call him Diamante on purpose to piss people <laughs> off. I know it's pronounced Diamant. The thing is that at least in like, at least in that case, there is an actual official voice acted version. Whereas, yeah. like, the Guy Gi stuff, I know Heroes exists now, and I assume Guy is on Heroes now, and so that's where, yeah. like, the, it's actually this. But, like, people were so anal about that even beforehand. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I don't even care. Like, the only reason that I, like, have a now hard stance about it is because the people who have a hard stance and get mad at you for saying Guy, which is, like, the way that that is pronounced in English, right? Yeah. Like, I get that he's not based on the English name, but when I was growing up, when I was a little girl, I had a friend named Guy, uh, and he spelled it G-U-Y. So, like, it's a real person name. Um, which yeah. is why I was like, oh yeah, that's, like, how you pronounce it. And then some, like, Reddit-pilled person was like, actually, it's pronounced E. And I was like, actually, I don't give a shit. Well, like, like also with Guy, like, um, well, in, in, also in Epicenter, you know, uh, 
this uh, how do you pronounce his this one this one Parker, I think this one this one Parker. this one like makes me more upset than like Guy Gi like I don't really care about Guy Gi yeah. Bartre Barter it's like uh, I hate I hate Barter but I see oh I see I say Barter now but I used to say Bartre and yeah. it's another one where like again I don't care I think they're both fine the reason I highlight Guy Gi is I think people get really aggressive Guy Gi is Guy Gi is, more, is brought up more than like Barter Bartre. Um, same thing happens with the serious Siryu. Oh, that, yeah, that um, one I don't care about enough. But no one, no one ever gets mad about uh, Shida Sita. Yeah. It's also like some of them are like localization things, right? Mm -hmm. Where like for the longest time, uh, the unit that is currently referred to as, as Thana was referred to as Tate. And when I first played Fire Emblem Six, the translation that we had referred to her as Tate. So I call her Tate, because just, like, it's what she is in my head for the amount of time that I played with her. Um, recently, someone uh, got really upset that I was referring to her as Tate, um, to which, like, my response is, I mean, you knew what unit I was talking about, so what difference does it make? Like, if the point of language is to communicate, I have successfully communicated that we're talking about this unit. Um... And like the FE4 units, you run into actually both of these problems with FE4 because a lot of them have like weird pronunciations. Uh, and also there's like 17 translations for all of their names. I will say with the FE4 units, I am more sympathetic to and try to pronounce things correctly with FE4, specifically because those names are actually based on, um, I believe it's Welsh names they're they're more rooted in, in um in like um i don't want to use the wrong word um but they're, they're more rooted in like i think in a cultural they have more cultural significance yeah um, and so it feels racist to mispronounce it because it's like oh i'm disrespecting this culture yeah, yeah. it I might be it might not be well i don't it's it's a gaelic culture mm -hmm. i just don't know which one if you know, comment below. Yes. That'll be the comment bait. Is comment if you know what they're based in. But like for those, if someone tells me like, I think it's pronounced Naush instead of Noish no is what right. most no people said. Yeah. Na Naush? I might be saying that wrong. And like I apologize if I am. Um, I try to get those correct because they are culturally significant to people. Mm. Nobody culturally care. Nobody is actually like. Barter is not culturally significant to anyone. Uh, and so for that, when people are, are correcting the pronunciation, it's like the Reddit build stuff, right? Yeah. You're hovering over the button. This took me like two minutes in testing because I just spammed no, I, it. I'm, I'm trying to al al algorithm this. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna get the algorithm comments. You're gonna get two types of comments. They're going to be people telling us where the names from FE4 originate, yeah. and then there's gonna be people saying, "Why did you spend so long before hitting enter?" Oh, no, 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 no. This is all like a, an advertisement for Sword of Heaven Earth again, where like you should play Sword of Heaven because Gi from from Fire Emblem Savon is there. Oh, he is. No. Is he the Karel archetype? No. They're all moving. <laughs> I will say, um, as much as, like, I think a lot of Sword of Heaven and Earth's design philosophy is, like, really outdated and bad, I like its Jagan design. Oh, I love, um, yeah, I love the Jagan. Oof, blast, I won't um, forget about this. I gotta do that again. It's, that's, like, the best <laughs> sound know. clip from the other Let's Play. Okay. He's also got, like, a really mousy face. I like that. Yeah, that's the, um, person telling you about guy versus gee versus Giuseppe. <laughs> Giuseppe moment. Comment Giuseppe below for the algorithm. Giuseppe's gonna be the mascot besides Dart. Alright. Bye. Like, subscribe, bye.